A show that was, I don't know, huge and a lot of things happened on Sunday that just changed my whole world and day. And so needless to say, yeah, a little late. Good News Weekly, uh, Volume 9 or 1709 to be proper, uh, kind of the year, then the number. It's not that difficult to figure out, but uh, it's just my way of keeping track of them and sorting and all that good stuff. So let's get right into it. A heroic 39-year-old didn't hesitate to jump into the window of a moving car in order to assist a random driver suffering from a seizure. Tompkins stopped his truck, ran towards the convulsing man's car, and leapt through the passenger side window of the driver's moving car and managed to bring the vehicle to a halt. Now, I just want to state that the car was, it was idling. It's not like it was doing 40 miles an hour, and this guy is like somehow superhuman, mind you. But needless to say, very cool nonetheless. The world has become increasingly concerned about the disappearing honeybee populations, but now researchers may have just created an easy, downloadable piece of software that can be used by amateur and professional enthusiasts alike to save the bee species worldwide. Pretty cool. Scientists at the University of Missouri have cobbled together an inexpensive acoustic listening system that uses data from small microphones in the field to monitor bees in flight. The software uses special algorithms that detects the buzzing of bees and calculates the status of the local population based off the sounds. I totally realized I should have Flight of the Bumblebee playing right now. It just hit me right now, and that's really unfortunate. But, yeah, just imagine that song. <laughs> anyway. Earlier last week, the Front Street Animal Shelter of Sacramento, California, that is, I guess that should be obvious to everyone except people that live in the state, um, they announced on Facebook that they had no more room for dogs in their facility. The shelter made a post online encouraging readers to rescue their residents by coming in and adopting a pet. There was one animal in particular that the shelter went out of their way to showcase for adoption, a loving dog named Joyce that had been living there for two months, waiting for a forever home. A family in British Columbia saw the mutt and just said, "Ah, oh, we got to go get her. So they drove 16 hours each way to get the dog. Very cool. This garbage man went to the market. No, he really didn't. He hated to see all the books and trash bins at the wealthier neighborhoods, so he started salvaging them to create a new library for his own neighborhood. When he decided to rescue books from the trash, it created a snowball effect that inspired him to continue saving discarded literature. Gutierrez has since collected over 20,000 books that now make up his own free library, aptly named Strength of Words. Every single room of his house is overflowing with literature, which he opens up to the community children on the weekends. And I'm not even going to touch how creepy isk that kind of sounds. Casey Spellman of Indianapolis was visiting friends in Chicago and spotted a blind man having trouble hailing a cab. Without a word, Spellman split from her friends, walked over to the man and tapped him on the shoulder. Do you want some help getting a cab? Spellman asked. He said, yeah, you sound pretty, so cabs will probably stop for you before me. Spellman recalled uh, the man joking. 26-year-old man didn't, didn't think anything of her uh, act of kindness, but Ryan Hamilton, who was watching from a rooftop of a restaurant across the way, was so touched by this kind gesture, he posted pictures of the pair on Facebook praising the woman for lending a helping hand. Gavel was recruited as a puppy to train as a police dog, and he showed a lot of promise. But this German shepherd ended up getting fired for being too friendly. However, as one of the door closes, sometimes another one opens there for you. And Gavel, he was offered a new job working for the governor of Queensland, where he now holds the prestigious title of Vice Regal Dog. Yes, so, so highfalutin, right? He may have missed out on becoming a Queensland police service dog, but it's abundantly clear that Gavel has the characteristics necessary to adequately fulfill duties as Queensland's official vice-regal dog. Not to mention the fact that he's bilingual in four languages. That's right, he barks in, like, Russian. He can bark in German. Anywho. After 24 hours of labor, Kira, the gorilla, had not progressed and was beginning to tire and show signs that she was feeling worse. Philadelphia Zoo had to act, and act fast, I say, they were going to save Kira and her baby, so they brought in a team of veterinarians and regular doctors to perform an emergency delivering using procedures and equipment similar to those used in human deliveries. And it worked. The 17-year-old Western Lowland Gorilla successfully delivered a healthy 5-pound B. 
baby boy. And not to be confused when you're looking at that picture, because I know a lot of you are going, ooh, but that so very much looks like the Cross River Gorilla, or is that the Mountain Gorilla? Or, oh, it could be the Eastern Lowland Gorilla as opposed to the Western Lowland Gorilla. Fortunately, that answer was given to us. Zookeepers cared for this newborn for about 24 hours until Kira, uh, who was placed under anesthesia for the delivery, was finally good. She had been cradling and nursing him ever since, the zoo reported. Though Kira is a first-time mom, we're not surprised she's acting like an expert already. She was a great older sister to younger siblings and has been very attentive, while our other female gorilla, Honey, has raised her baby, Amani, said Dr. Andy Baker of the Philadelphia Zoo. He's the chief operating officer. That is all sorts of good stuff. Everyone is apparently very excited about the future of these two playmates. Coming up with a unique, innovative way to solve problems is great. Ah, but sometimes borrowing an existing idea is just as good, eh? The city of Tulsa, Oklahoma is looking to earmark $25,000 to fund a program that will combat panhandling by offering cleanup jobs and social services to people on the streets. It got the idea from the neighbor to the west, good old Albuquerque, New Mexico. Tulsa's version is a carbon copy of the Albuquerque program, even taking its name, because why waste any time being creative? But it's called There's a Better Way. That city's initiative began in 2015 and allocated $50,000 from their annual budget to hire 10 to 12 day laborers twice a week. They were paid $9 an hour for their work and given access to social service workers who could help them find more permanent employment. The program achieved such wide success that its funding has been increased by nearly 500%. What would... Would you give away 90% of your salary? Well, Dan Price, CEO of Gravity Payments, did just that. And not only that, he shared it amongst his staff. It is a commendable move that will pay the way for wider pay equality. In April, the CEO of the U.S. tech company did something with barely any precedence in the modern business world. He gave away 90% of his own pay to raise the salaries of his employees to a minimum of $70,000 a year. Dan Price, CEO of Seattle-based Gravity Payments, recalls the moment when he announced the decision to his 120 staff. There was a moment of stunned silence. Some people were looking around at each other. A few draws, jaws dropped. And then someone actually asked me to repeat myself. Then the team started clapping, cheering, and giving each other high fives. It was an emotional moment. And there's some study he cited that so long-winded I didn't want to say it, but essentially they found a study that if you make up to $75,000 that people tend to be happier and happier, but once it gets over $75,000, um, that that happiness quotient doesn't really happen anymore. So, ah, yeah, that's why I said 70 grand. But still, a lot of those guys, that's probably much, much more than they were making. So that's cool. Alberta's Jeff Giles is driving up the Alaska Highway this weekend en route to Whitehorse. His mission... Dun, 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 to drop off 10,000 checks for the local food bank. It's Giles' unique way of celebrating Canada 150. He's already delivered checks to five provincial capitals and plans to keep going until he's reached all 13 provincial, provincial and territorial capitals in the country. I thought it was a good moment in time to take a look at one problem that faces all of Canada, which is a hunger problem, said Giles from Camor Alta. He started his journey to end hunger to raise awareness of child hunger in Canada. An estimated 1.1 million children face food insecurities in communities across Canada each year, according to the Food Banks of Canada. It couldn't have come at a better time, said Tristan Newcomb at the Whitehorse Food Bank, which is gearing up for a very busy summer. And they couldn't be any more grateful. All right, well, I hope everybody, I hope you enjoyed our Good News Weekly. Came in with Callaway, I Want to Be Rich, uh, ties into that money song. And, uh, no, I'm sorry, that's what I'm going out with. We actually came in, uh, or we're, um, yeah, came in with Who Let the Dogs Out by Baja, man, which, of course, ties into the dog stories. Eh, man, yeah, take your pick. They're there. That's what they're here for. Dan uh, Radio Style, if you guys want to contact me, feel free to do so at uh, danradiostyle at gmail.com. And thanks for joining me on another Good News Weekly, Volume 9. This is Callaway. I want to be.